that like internalized patriarchy in me, maybe. <laughs> But, um, like, no one ever talks to me or asks me these things. Um, I don't ask myself these things. So, yeah, it's like, I'm just spewing what comes out to you right now. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> the vibrations. <laughs> Are you self-conscious about anything? Yeah, these answers. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Like, okay. So, what is your name? Christina. Huh? Okay. Do you want my last name? You can give whatever you want. Christina. <laughs> okay. And how old are you? I'm 25. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It gets to a certain point where it's like I'm 20 something. Whatever. Doesn't matter after 21, right? It's just awesome because everybody's forgotten how old they are. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter at this point. <laughs> I don't need to know for any reason. Like, you've gotten all the checkpoints. I don't need a senior's discount yet. Right, right. <laughs> okay, so big question. Who are you on a soul level? Who am I on a soul level? I don't know. Um, like, I know there's no right answer to this. So I'm gonna tell you the first thing that pops up to my mind is like a nurturer. Okay. Um, why? Why? Um, I mean, I think, so what comes to mind for me of like who I am at my core is that I've always wanted to help and help people, whether it's like helping them heal or um, helping them grow. I mean, I've always loved kids and so like, if anyone knows me knows me well, I should say, um, they know that like my main purpose here is to be a fucking mom. And until then, just trying to make myself into the best person I can be before that happens. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that kind of comes to mind. I think the Aquarius in me has that like humanitarian side. Yeah. Yes. Um, so yeah, that's what comes to mind for me. Um, at what point in your life did you feel like you were here to be a mom? Or have you always felt like that? I think it's been like that since I was little. Like, ever since I was little, like, so I want to say at least six years old, I was playing with the babies and watching the babies and wanting to babysit. I think that was, like, the beginning of it. Okay. So... Are there any life events or major happenings um, that are going on right now or that have happened to you um, that affect how you think or view the world or view yourself that you can think of? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple that comes to mind. So, ayahuasca. Mm -hmm. um, I think that everyone's experience is different, but um, my takeaway with the medicine so far has been a lot of like, I think we're also stuck in this like technology and trying to put out what we think, uh, what we want people to think we are and who we are. Um, and I think a lot of like our own essence gets lost in that of like who we are, what are we on this earth for? Um, what's like your purpose mm -hmm. um, and so ceremony and ayahuasca has kind of shed some light for me of like taking away that filter that we have and kind of realizing that sometimes we have like a lens on things that filters our perspectives and our judgment and like the stories that we tell ourselves and like honestly it's just fucking simple to take that out and do what you want with life um, I also think of, um, I've been cheated on and I think I, but up until that point, I was always the person that said, if you ever fucking cheat on me, it's done. It's mm -hmm. over. Um, and it's not that black and white. Right. Uh, it's painful as fuck and it's definitely easy to walk away from that. But my sister, I think, sister and I were talking and she was like, you know, there was a quote that I saw and it's like, 
it, it goes something along the lines of like talking about you, you don't know or see like the strength behind people, women, people who stay after being cheated on and like what kind of work goes into building that relationship and how it's not all black and white and honestly like learning forgiveness, learning forgiveness beyond fuck ups, learning forgiveness beyond like whatever shit hits the fan that life throws at you. What was the question again? <laughs> um, I got if lost. any of those No, it's <laughs> fine. You were answering it. If any of those things has strongly affected yeah. the way you think and live. Yeah. And choose to be now. Yeah. Because I mean after I think those are two the two pivotal things that have happened so far of like doing some cere- some ayahuasca ceremony experiences and um, <laughs> the unfortunate events of being cheated on, it kind of was a good wake-up call for me mm-hmm. in the sense of, like, am I, am I doing, am I who I am as a partner? Am I who I am as a daughter, a sister, a student, whatever, a member of whatever community, um, and acting and being who I am based on, like, what was ingrained in me as a child, what people expect me to do, what people tell me should be expected out of relationships or work or your life and, you know, things like that. And that kind of made things click in my head of, like, who who am I, really? Mm-hmm. What is it that I want, aside from what my mom tries to live vicariously through aside from what you know like what's expected of society and you know the roles that we play with each other and I think um (laughs) I mean like I'm in grad school now and it's kind of shifted my perspective of like oh this is all like yeah you know shit's stressful but like at the end of the day it doesn't there's more to life than caring about that it's kind of shifted your perspective my perspective of like um, yeah, of like black and white. Not everything is black and white, and and um, and really learning, learning how to like forgive and work through pain and sit through uncomfortable situations and feelings that we all like to just distract ourselves with and open up the phone instead, watch Netflix instead. Mm-hmm. Um, to like learn to sit with the unknown, to learn to sit with discomfort and pain to learn to sit with just all the things that we have been like conditioned to not want to deal with right yeah that was an awesome answer (laughs) and your eyebrows look great thank you they're (laughs) microbladed yeah (laughs) okay so there are three categories and the things in the categories don't necessarily have to have anything to do with each other, but they could all relate depending on what kind of person you are. Okay. So the first category is love, sex, and relationships. Mm-hmm. The next category is society, culture, and politics. And the next category is spirituality and religion. Okay. So out of those three groups of things, what means the most to you and why and what means the least to you and why it's tough because I like i want to tease those groups and apart. you can you can I, if you want I, to i i think so what's number one for like what's most important mm-hmm. what's most important would be spirituality okay. to me I mean, like, if I, if I could pick and choose, it'd be spirituality and culture and relationships. Um, but I'll just make it easy for you and say spirituality. Um, and I think the least important... Eh, religion. I'm, I'm, I don't know a lot about religion, honestly. Religion. Okay. So it's interesting because that's in the same group, which is why I said that it's weird because they might not have anything to do with each other. Because I've always been, like, I have very much um, throughout my life been like, no, I'm not religious. I think throughout childhood I was like, I'm an atheist. And then I learned that, you know, what is it? I don't even know what it is anymore. Um, I'm blanking on the word. The word... You like agnostic? Me. Yeah, there yeah. it is. Yeah, like for a long time, I used to think I was agnostic, and religion has always been like a conflict mm. in my family. So that's why I'm like, mm, not a fan of it. But you know, it's a little different from spirituality, and I think I'm definitely on the more spiritual side. 
as far as the religious side. Okay. Is there a reason why spirituality is more important to you than everything else? Because at the end of the day, it's you. <laughs> you got yourself, yourself only, um, to me. And I think, you know, you have to be able to be comfortable with yourself and accept yourself and uh, grow if you want to grow as a person, ideally, hopefully, maybe. Um, and I think, I mean, and you can get all of that. I mean, you can grow and experience tremendous things and learn so much from relationships and culture and everything else. But I think, at, yeah, at the end of the day, when everything's said and done, it's you and you and your yourself. And um, like, what are you going to do with that? How are you going to sit with it? What are you going to say for yourself? What have you done? How do you contribute? Um, like, who are you as a member of this collective society, culture, consciousness? That's awesome. Um, I wanted to ask you, I mean, have you, do you feel like you've had your spiritual awakening yet? You know, I like, do you feel I'm like? definitely on the path. Um... Sorry, I cut you off. Do I feel like... No, I mean, I, th I think that was it. Like, do you feel like um, there's a specific something that you're looking for, like, on mm. that spiritual path? Mm. Yeah, I mean, like, I think, you know, m monks and Buddhists and people look for uh, their own version of, like, enlightenment or, you know, reaching heaven or whatever, like, whatever the thing is, like, the end goal. Um, but in terms of like spiritual, I think I've, I'm on the path, done some ceremonies, some medicine ceremonies and, um, I'm surrounding myself and meeting and trying to, you know, raise the, uh, raise the vibrations. <laughs> 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 so high that no one else. Anyways, uh, <laughs> have I had my spiritual awakening yet? I think yes. So I answer the question. Was that even the question? That was the question. That was the question. And that was definitely an answer. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. No, no, you're, you're fine. You're doing wonderful. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to draw for the rest of the interview. Great. Um, you can draw whatever you want. Great. The colors that I'm going to ask you to pick, though, I want you to pick one for your mood right now and one that represents your life. Or you can pick multiple that represent your mood and multiple that represent your life, whatever. And everyone's seen these markers before, so... Do I, um, justify and relate the colors to each one? Mm-hmm. Just, uh, <clears throat> tell us why, I guess, whatever color you pick represents your mood. My mood and... In your life. In my life. God. Or you as a being. Me as a being. Well, I'm going to pick um, like the darkest purple for my being. Um, because, honestly, I just really feel purple. Um, what does purple feel like? Like... Like, an, like, richness comes to my mind automatically, but I think that's more so because of schooling and, mm -hmm. like, royalty and, like, the, the mind telling me all right. this knowledge about purple. But um, it's just soothing for me. I mean, like, peacock colors, cool tone colors are very soothing. So, unsurprisingly, the next color I will pick is along the same line. But purple is, like, um, aside from the eggplant emoji... <laughs> Um, me as a being, uh, I, I, I just really identify with it. Yeah. Aside from, I, I mean, like my mind wants to keep interjecting with like, it's your birthstone, amethyst, deep purple. Mm. Um, so there's probably that in play as well. Um, but it just reminds me of like steady, uh, calming and I can be 
the opposite of that most times but for the most part I think I'm a pretty steady trying to be a calming force so I'm gonna say that purple <laughs> for me my essence my being and my mood doesn't matter uh, I love that. I love that. That's a beautiful color. Why is that your moon? And does that stand, does that make you feel the same soothing? I mean, that or... reminds me of water. Mm. Reminds me of, uh, yeah, it reminds me of water. And um, it was just a beautiful day outside. <laughs> and it was. It, it just, yeah, reminds me. Okay, so what makes you the most upset? Like irate, upset, or you can say pet peeves, and you can say like this is what like is the bane of my existence. Oh, um, <laughs> honestly, the first thing that comes to my mind. Um, no, <laughs> I'm gonna filter that one out. No, say it for real. That's that's what the people need to hear. The things you want to Well, I don't filter. want to put him on blast, but my oh, voice. <laughs> I love you still, but my boyfriend's, um, he's just always fucking late oh, to everything. Oh, he's late. Okay. So lateness, lateness. makes you upset. Like, okay. I'm, I'm a I very, like, time urgent person, mm -hmm. even though I, I understand, like, lateness, tardiness, whatever, but it's, like, the, the concept of time, I guess, when people don't have that concept to me, which I know, like, time is relative, time is, you know, quantum physics. Right. Um... Okay, like pet peeves. Honestly, it's it's when people gossip just because they have nothing better to do. Mm. Or when people complain about a problem but don't actually do anything to fix it. Like people who always complain they're broke but never actually do the work to like make money or like do what they want to do to get them out of that situation right. people who are in situations complain about it but don't do anything to get themselves out that's that's what irritates me beyond end yeah. good answer um what excites you more than anything uh honestly the future which for the first time at least out loud has never excited me. That's like the first time I've actually said the future excites me. The unknown excites me. Um, I think now I'm at this point where, I mean, I'm a creature of habit. Mm -hmm. So I think anyone, you wouldn't be surprised if I just like did the same thing, like stayed in the same place and like had a routine I like routine I like comfort I don't like change mm -hmm. um but I think uh, like in conjunction with a lot of my other experiences of like ceremony and um you know like I'm about to graduate from this program soon it used to kind of scare me of the unknown of like oh well, I don't have my shit together I don't mm -hmm. know what's gonna happen um but at this point it's just kind of like a almost like a reframing of like well there's so many fucking possibilities right. that could happen that you can't even think of or know of but it's a possibility and you might take a step in that direction and that's so fucking exciting <laughs> what are you most afraid of uh since it isn't the unknown anymore since it isn't the unknown <laughs> dying without having kids that like internalized patriarchy in me, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's the first thing is honestly, I, I'll I'll say like if I get into a tragic accident and you can save my eggs, save my eggs. Mm -hmm. Make sure I have a kid. But I think I gotta change. I mean, I think now that I'm saying that out loud, I need I need change that stance because. What's the point in saving my eggs if I'm not there to nurture when mm. I want to be a mom? So what am, what's my fear? The fact that I don't know. Hmm? The unknown both excites me and scares the shit out of me, but it also is exciting. It's a good place to be, though. Yeah. 
a good place to be. Make a face that explains you. Like if you were an expression, what would you be? <laughs> That's amazing. So explain this, like, <laughs> explain this expression. Uh, like, uh, I can't. <laughs> the face that explains, that ex like, this is the face that it expresses me, right? Mm hmm Yeah, it just, I mean, I have a resting bitch face, so, mm. but I'm not, <laughs> I can be when you bring it out in me, but I'm not. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, I just like to. I'm I'm a lurker. We talked about this. I'm yeah. a lurker, <laughs> so I don't want to draw attention. That's like a non-attentional face to yeah. really pay attention to, and uh, and it's me probably reacting in my head of like, yeah, I know. I already knew that. <laughs> Word. <laughs> okay. Um, explain what social media is to you. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. That's what it is to me. It's like, that's the bane of my existence. Social if media. I could go without my phone or electronics, really, life would be great. Uh, because, yeah, I mean, I think the only thing I'm really on is in Instagram, and now I've fallen into the world of Reddit like mm. years too late I've fallen into the world of reddit but it's great I understand that there are tools to connect people and bring people that could never have connected closer together and I mean like that's how we and I connected mm -hmm. but at the same time it's just like it, people are constantly checking and seeking for validation um distracting themselves just like i i think we would be i think we would be different humans without mm. social media i yeah. agree um, okay um do you have any weird habits uh yeah <laughs> what are they <laughs> clearing my pores <laughs> Do you not just use this strip? No, like I mean, ever? yeah, no, I use okay. moisturizers, but, like, I'm super into, I don't know when it started. I think, like, sixth grade. Like, those magnified mirrors. Oh, uh, okay. Fifteen times magnified is kind of magic there in and of itself. And, <laughs> and, and then, like, add an extractor to it and just, it's good stuff. And I, <laughs> like, I've gotten into a habit now of, like, every day I just kind of, Pick that up. Oh, oh, there's a, oh, let's get the extractor in. Like, it's really, I'm, I was always that kid that was, like, I liked to pick scabs and stuff and skin. Yeah. Like, it was fun mm -hmm. for me. I don't, it's probably gross, but I mean, that was fun for me. And so I think that that transitioned into my weird habit of, like, staring at my pores. But now you have the cleanest pores. They're not, <laughs> they're not clean. They're just regularly emptied. <laughs> <laughs> are there any other ones or are you just like Weird a pore habits? cleaner I'm, I mean I'm a pore cleaner in the sense that I like pour into my pores yes um, weird habits I mean is it weird to so I have like the these like ritual candles and like special candles and weird. no 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 not that's not the part no I was like <laughs> they sell those everywhere <laughs> that's fine no I'm super stu superstitious and like super careful about like who touches them and so I get I get super possessive and weird when I live with my boyfriend mm -hmm. and he he'll like we like to light candles all the time instead of using the lights in the house sometimes mm -hmm. and he'll light he's lit my ritual candles and I'm like why? Why did you touch it? Now it's not going to work. Uh. <laughs> now I have to buy a new one. Now that's your candle. That's your original candle. It's not mine anymore. It's not going to work for me. Bring me vitality? Nope, it's all gone. But it's your vitality now, so thanks. <laughs> yeah, I think those are the...
I'm sure he could tell you otherwise. Yeah, those were amazing though. I love them. <laughs> um, share an embarrassing moment. It can be from any time in your life. Embarrassing moment. Yeah. One time in high school, I thought I was playing those stupid games where, like, you know, I'm gonna walk away from you so you can follow me and chase me. Um, from a guy that I was interested in. Mm. <laughs> it was on a fucking playground, mind you. <laughs> like, two o'clock in the morning, because we were in high school. Um, and I pulled that stupid move, except as I was going down the stairs, like, the mulch was wet, and so my... <laughs> I was wearing sandals that had no grip, and I just ate shit. Oh. <laughs> and slipped and fell on the mulch oh. as I'm trying to, like, walk away from him, as in, like, come and chase me because that's what the game I want to play. And then I was like, nope, going home now. <laughs> can't recover from that. <laughs> can't recover. <laughs> Wipe it off, go home. Just don't think about this anymore, and I haven't thought about it until now. I'm sorry for bringing that up. <laughs> oh, no, it's fine. It's, like, not embarrassing anymore. I'm just like, are there other embarrassing moments for me? <laughs> probably. And I've probably blocked them out. That's what we all do, so it's oh, fine. No. <laughs> uh, probably blocked them out. Um, what don't you want to tell people but know you should share because it will help someone else? In general? Mm-hmm. Get off your fucking phone. That's what I want to tell people. Do you, like, not want to say that, though? I feel like you have no issue saying that. I mean, it's just... I just don't think it's my place to tell people what to do. Like, if someone was like, hey, I'm in this scenario. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't openly. And I'm not like, oh, hey, I've been in that scenario, too. Yeah, being cheated on. Except now I'm telling the world. <laughs> so, I mean, it's fine. So many people have been yeah, cheated on. Yeah, there's a lot of people who are on the same boat. Yeah. I mean, how did you get, you? that hurt you, like, deeply, I can tell. So, like, how did you recover from that? And how have you, I guess, learned to trust your boyfriend now? Because you're yeah. in another relationship. Um, I went to my ayahuasca ceremony, like, very shortly after I found out. So that, you know, I don't think people are joking when they're like, it's ten years of therapy in a night. Pretty much, like. Wow. Um all the feelings I could feel, all the hurt, all the pain I could feel was part of my experience during one of the nights that I had a ceremony. And um, and then after that, it was just kind of like, yeah, it, sh it sucks. Um, and, you know, you have to rebuild that trust. Um, but at the end of the day, I think once I kind of felt all of the things to feel about it, it was just kind of like, well, you have two options. You can stay or you can walk away. Um, and I chose to stay because I was like, I, I have faith that he, I had faith that, um, and still do, that he uh, will change. Cause he kind of, he came to me at every, infidelity experience is different but he came to me telling me and was like I fucked up and this is how I fucked up and I swear to god if it's like what I do for the rest of my life I'm gonna make it right for you I'm gonna make it right between us um so I think taking that leap of faith and just saying you know what I'm gonna choose to believe you even though there will always be be a tiny voice in my head going where is he who is he with what is he doing what did he do last time why is he working late where is he now why isn't he answering his phone he's gone to voicemail six times <laughs> um you know like i think you have to learn or i had i learned to kind of consciously choose that i'm not going to give my energy and awareness and attention to that side and I'm gonna have faith that you know we're gonna grow because that's the intention is to grow together because I mean when you're together with someone you're not the same person mm -hmm. that that 
you were when you first met them. Mm -hmm. Um, And so people fuck up. People make mistakes. And um, so going to a ceremony experience definitely helped. Um, I think having a good network of support Mm -hmm. with my sisters and my friends um, close friends, because it's not something that I openly talked about, right. um, was good. And then ultimately, like, through my experience, I just kind of felt a lot of um, forgiveness. Because at the end of the day, my thought process was, like, cheating is an indication of something wrong in a right. relationship. It doesn't matter who's... I mean, it does, eventually, maybe, at some point, whose fault it is, where the point the blame and finger is at but it's it's the indication that there isn't something right going on with this relationship so what needs to happen what needs to change um and so it was a lot of self-reflection on my part too of like um you know what kind of for our situation at least like what kind of what was he feeling to feel like driven to that point where he felt solace and comfort in someone else um, and to try to like understand and forgive that that <laughs> the the infidelity because what I learned was that he was in a lot of pain and mm. we had a lot of just growing in our relationship that we needed I don't think I think like you know he ha- he's asked me from time to time do you wish that I never told you? And I'm like, no, because we wouldn't be the same people we are now if he hadn't told me. If you just, like, swallow that and keep it to yourself. Like, I probably would have never... No, no, I probably would have found out one way or another. Or maybe not, you know? Um, but regardless of whether or not I find out, like, it would have been a shitty relationship because we would have been living lies <laughs> together. Right, exactly. And just, like, pretending that things were okay when they're not. But we're just going to pretend that it's okay and keep with the normal routine because that's what's familiar and comforting and normal. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have a almost three-year-old niece. And she's just like her mom. And she's very sassy. Her mom is my sister. (laughs) um, She's getting to the point now where, like, she's not excited to see me anymore um, when I show up. And she just kind of expects that I'll play with her. She does her own thing. She's being very independent now. So one time I... Usually the response is usually like, no, don't go. I'll tell her that... I stop by before work. And I'll be like, okay, Emma, I have to go. I have to go teach yoga, I have to go to work. <laughs> One time, she was just like, just like me, like covering, coloring. I'm like, okay, Emma, I have to go. Okay, then go. And then <laughs> back to coloring. Like, I meant nothing to her because the coloring was so <laughs> much more fun. And I was Aww. like, okay, goodbye then, little girl. See you later. <laughs> I mean, she's really funny. Um, like like literally today I think she hasn't she's been like backed up and she finally went to the bathroom and um her mom was like oh honey it stinks in here and she's like oh I know it smells so bad <laughs> uh, kids <laughs> why did we ever change <laughs> right right we really don't have to <laughs> we don't Thank you so, so much. Oh, show everybody what you drew. What did you draw? Um, it actually looks pretty amazing. Triangles. <laughs> okay. What's up with those triangles? I've had this, like, geometric shape in my head for a while. So I just, I like triangles. Three is, a, like, a good number for me. I'm one of three. It's, like, a nice balance. You know, everything can stand on three. There's also the spiritual meanings as well for three. Mm-hmm. Um, and I saw triangles during a ceremony experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and I could never replicate what I saw. So, but what's in my head is this. What does it mean? That's up to you. But it's this. <laughs> Can you even see it? Yeah. Do you want my face? <laughs> yeah. The 
it looks amazing. Thank you so, so much. You're welcome. Thank you awesome. for coming down. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I'm Christina and I'm in the flesh. Yeah. <laughs>